Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Yeah, hi, folks. It's Barry Chambers, a uh, very, very good guest. I'm doing this interview in 94 feet. I've got landlord problems, but I'm doing it anyways because I like this guy and I like his book. All right, let's go straight to it. You know what? Tell people, Michael, tell people how to get your book before we go on. Uh, you can get the book in audiobook, ebook, hardcover, or softcover at Amazon.com. You can review and read the first chapter at my website at thedevilinsidethebeltway.com. And you can also look around Barnes & Noble or iTunes for the book. All right. Now, I'm, I've got your book with notes all over the place and check marks and what I'm going to ask you. Let's keep it simple. It's too hot to go into there. One by one, the characters. Character number one, I didn't find all that sympathetic, though you say she's gorgeous. Evelyn O'Connor. <laughs> the lawyer. <laughs> yep. She is trying to defend you. I don't think she did a, a very wise job. Okay, go into it. Well, she's been my lawyer for 20 years. And she, you know, and she thought that we were dealing with something bigger than she had experienced doing. And she's quite an excellent attorney. And a good attorney, you know, always But an expensive announces. one. Yeah, well, you know, she yeah, exactly. I mean, attorneys are not cheap. Uh, uh and 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 so for sure. you know, I I but she was easy to work with. She had she truly had our well-being at her concern, and she understood at some point that she was uh outside of her expertise. And so she really wanted me to find another lawyer. Did she? I didn't yeah, get oh, you that haven't had that book so yet. far. <laughs> Yeah. All right. In order, again, there are a lot of characters here. Believe me when I tell you this, it's not a simple story. Well, Look, it's written like a novel. The, the book is written like a novel. It's not supposed to be this, you know, it's supposed to be written like re you're reading a novel, but it happens to be true. Or, you know, the best of my recollection, true. <laughs> Let's go through the characters. Let's help people out. Who is Thomas Snyder? He testified to the House of Representatives into sharing files. Who is he? Uh, that is actually Thompson Dorn. He is uh, he has had several jobs in D.C. He's a lawyer, and he worked at U.S. Patent and Trade Office at that point. And he testified in front of Congress about the fact that the software that was used to get the file is built to fool the user and to share files that the user had no intention or knowledge of sharing. So his Who testimony asked him to testify to this. You know, I don't I don't know that. I mean, usually Congress uh, invites you when they want certain points of view, but that hearing was, you know, way before I even knew about it. So I just everyone I just had the is transcript. Victimized. Everyone can be victimized. By Correct. the way, I think I'm victimized all the time on the Internet, but that's neither, it's not my uh, show. But you're saying what he testified to is no one's safe. Right. He testified that this can happen to anyone and that the software is the problem, not the user, because the software is not doing what it said it's going to do. All right. That's background. Now foreground. I hate to do this, but get ready for Robert Bobak. All right. Head of... Well, oh, go Robert ahead. Bo Just Robert Bobak was a chiropractor, and he... In, in and he cracked backs. You're saying a backcracker got you this uh, uh, trouble? <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he was... Test backcracker was testifying in front of Congress. How about that, huh? No kidding. And uh, he started the company uh, along with a gentleman named Sam Hopkins, I believe. And they were trying to sell peer-to-peer -peer 
solutions to files that were out there without intention of the user. And he, being an entrepreneur, he wanted to have access to the government, so he he How built can soak a, people. Are you saying that's what he's saying? I've got a way to soak people. Well, he yeah he got he started evidently uh, from from the testimony that we heard last week um, having files, um, IP addresses, and the locations of them made up. I believe You're around two thousand seven. You're saying we can get you more trouble and it's worth pay up. Yep. Yep. That's your answer. All right, fair enough. Well, yeah, I'm being sued for defamation here. (laughs) Don't worry about that. Your company's been. Don't worry about that. All right. (laughs) You've got enough to sue for defamation beyond this interview. Now, what you wrote is he. I don't know what this is. He signed Sow, S O W. I know it's a female pig. Other than that, what's Sow? Statement of work. Of course. What is that? Well, he sends over a, you know, there was this game he played where every time he asked for information, uh, he would say, you're going to have to have a services agreement. And he would build, you know, the anxiety of, oh, the files out there, it could be spreading, you must solve it sooner rather than later, and then he would send a quote. A sow is essentially a quote for the work they're going to do, and it's a statement of intended work. And then if you wanted to hire them, you'd sign that contract. Why would they use a stupid name like, all right, doesn't matter. Uh, It's a relatively common corporate, you know. Maybe they had a great sense know. of humor, obviously. They must have known what a sow is. <laughs> All right, let's go on. It gets work. Now, Jim, again, a new name, Cook, <laughs> from, again, Bobak's company, told you that it would be illegal for them not to report you to the FTC. All right, what's this all about? Well, this was later in 2008 when we wouldn't hire them and we told them to go away. And Jim Cook is Tiverse's lawyer, and he called my lawyer informing us that they were giving the file to the Federal Trade Commission. And he was pretty aggressive about it, and he, he, he went over and said that, that he is going to, um, uh, you know, uh, have to turn it over. And that was the threat, I take it. You don't pay us, next stage you'll pay. Yeah, he was very careful in his words, but he spoke, you know, he spoke to my lawyer. He didn't speak These to me. These are not cheerful people, all right? That's correct, You're they're not cheerful. <laughs> they're not cheerful, that's for sure. All right, so he said it would be illegal for him not to report you to the FTC. That's what he informed yeah, He's making that stuff up, right? You know, because we're a medical facility and we, we, we work with health and human services. But, you know, we didn't pay too much attention to him. I think you might have been wise to uh, pay attention. But neither here nor there. There are a lot of legal, well, they're, they're really just pishers. But pishers can ruin your life, you know? Um, in this case, it certainly did. It, you were reported to the FTC, and your problems began to expand. They weren't going to go away. We know what they've done to other companies. They weren't going to go away. Paying them at that time wouldn't have done anything. So, oh, you know, gosh. that's just bad luck. Uh, no, it, was, it wasn't luck here. This was intended. You're all right. I won't dive into this. Look, next on my notes, I'm not even sure it's relevant, but I'll ask anyways. What's Napster? Well, Napster was just a, a software uh, uh, from years before, and it was used as an example in the book. So people would understand why people were using LimeWire, and it's, Napster was a file sharing software um, that that 
was sued out of business by the by the uh, recording industry because they were sharing the property, the intellectual property, and the copyrighted property oh, of the music company. You download a song instead of buying it, right? Correct. All right, and that is relevant to what you're doing. That's relevant in the explanation and the education of the reader. Of is what LimeWire does. Did that, that, that's court? not directly relevant to what we do. Hmm? Were they taken to court? Oh, yeah, they were taken to court well before. This was, that was just their, and they were, and they were they out of win? business as well. No. Well, then it is relevant. All right. I'm, look, are they a precedent or not? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's indirectly because that was about, um, that was about sharing music and helping them share, whereas LimeWire had much more inducement and duping going on. So um, it, was, it was just a foundational to say it was software used to share music. It, it wasn't re relevant outside of that. The court, the right, court we'll case was not it, a precedent. Right. Uh, you actually made a point of it, but apparently it was not a precedent for you. All right. Now, your employee, Elizabeth, who I assume was friends with Rebecca, right? Yes. She went looking for your files to find out how Tiberius, Tiberius, well, she, well, knew. Oh, more than a friend. I mean, she was the IT department. Yes, she was a friend, but she worked in the IT department. I mean, it's a small company. We all got along. What's IT? That's it. I mean that was the the, the internet, the, you know, the, 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 the technology. technology. Yeah. All right. Now she was sent by you, wasting her time. Oh God, you're trying to run a business, and then Liz goes looking for where Tiver Tiverus again, a company not everyone knows. Let me tell you, and. Well, they found that she was looking for the files, and they quoted her looking for files. All right, expand on this one. Well, you know, the, the, when we, 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 this guy wouldn't tell us anything, and we wanted to find out the file was out there to find out what we had to fix. And, if, and so we sent our own people out looking because we certainly didn't trust a stranger. And so that's what we did. She was given the assignment to go out on the networks and see if she could find it anywhere by and searching just Tiberis like they searched. The files. Uh, no, she gave Tavares the knowledge that she was looking for the files. Uh, actually, that's not what turned out to be true, but that's what we thought. Oh, then what's the truth? I don't know. I mean, it depends on what the testimony was last week. But, you know, we were looking for the files, and we never found them, and we continually looked for them. So Tiberius And that just proved our point Elizabeth. that there were no victims. And this no, was a big scam. That. Nobody complained about you except them. We've got that. And I can stress that again if you'd like. But no, no client of yours said to hell with them they're giving away my personal information that didn't happen correct well don't gloss over that that's kind of relevant you know you're being attacked by people you don't know well, I mean, there's only so much you can do. I mean, it was pretty amazing how, uh, in the public opinion, you're guilty till proven innocent. So, you know, what what is one supposed to do? Um, I, you know, it's 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 tough. It's tough to. Um, All right. Yeah, I mean, it's notes. just you're always put on the defensive, and you pretty much just have to ignore it. It's just like uh, you know, public criticism. You just have to ignore it because you can't run around you know, solving everyone's issues, so. Look, I will go through, this is the hard part, all right? Um, I may not know Elaine Shear, but I probably know his family, all right? <laughs> Look, he is, 
a lawyer, I believe, for the Division of Privacy and Identity Protection of the FTC. Did you know, folks, there's an Office of Division of Privacy and Identity Protection? Uh, did you ever write them? Well, they went after you. What? Right. First Alan Shear was the person that called us. He said he was always very cryptic and his words were cautious and he never gave us a lot of information and he was just an unbelievably bad character in the Federal Trade Commission. And, um, you know, he, he was the main investigator and he was the one that went to Tyversa's offices and he's the one that did not check evidence as well as other people there. But it was, it was his case to completely screw up. It was his case to get all what typed, wound up in and chase us too hard. In short, he was your bad guy after Bobrock, all right? We've got to put our enemies in file here. He went after you for the government. That's Not right. a private he went after. He, he went after for the government, and by relying by a cyber firm, and he didn't check evidence, and he didn't care to. He was, he was fine. And then once we started to push back, he really started to bully us because they're afraid of us teaching other people how to push back against them. They have to show their power when challenged. All right. And to do that... What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that they have. They would say they were going to sue us the next week, in and what they court? never would. In what court? Um, well, they have a choice. We don't. When they say, I mean, they sued us in their administrative court, but we don't know when the FTC decides to sue you. They can decide which court to sue you in. That's up to them. And uh, you know, so they oh, can take you straight to. Oh, that's too simple. Look, if they're going to sue you, they have to have something suable. What was the suit about? Section 5 of the FTC Act is, is what the suit's about. It's hard to understand because it's not black Help and white. They, what is Section they, 5? Expand. Section 5 is part of the FTC Act that Congress created in, in giving the Federal Trade Commission their power. And Section 5 is the part that talks about the, the FTC is supposed to, to work to protect consumers from deceptive actions of companies or businesses or organizations and, decept and unfair practices. So on the surface, it started off good. Oh, yeah, they always do that. They always, they always say they're doing wonderful things. Oh, gosh. All right. So you're going to be sued under Section 5 of the FTC Act by, if I'm not mistaken, Shear was going to take you to court. Correct. Because, gotcha. because he said we didn't you know, have strong data security practices. And we're like, how, how, how can you say that? I mean, he just, he didn't even come to Atlanta. This is a man that's never been to Atlanta to see our business. Not even and see the Hawks? No, not even see the Hawks. All righty. I got the idea. Folks, we're, I think we're doing okay. It's a very complicated story, but the government is threatening a company in Atlanta to take them to court unless, unless what? Unless we agree to let them audit us for 20 years at our expense, and that would open it up, us up to larger fines and punishments if we failed. And uh, at the same time, they would put a press release out, uh, and buried in the detail would, would be what we admitted no wrongdoing. So they... Uh, wait, wait, that's a good part. There's a way out here. So in other words, if you pay up and you pay their... I guess they're attorneys. You keep paying them for 20 years, nobody notices that you were in some way infringed. In other words, it's a way out. Right. And, and, and except they do notice. 
because they put the FTC puts press releases out all over telling everybody what they did, painting you to be the bad guy, and Does then it's up on the listen? internet it's forever. Does anyone care? Absolutely. Our competitors care and our doctors care. I mean, they, they do not want to use a medical facility that the government the, oh, the oh, is good. Speak. Michael, we're doing well. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to return to your book, and I did make notes. I'm going to stay on my notes. Folks, this is Barry Chamish. We've got a terrific, terrific guest in Michael Doherty. We'll be back in three minutes. I'll plug myself. I'll let him plug himself. And I've got a whole bunch of questions, but I think we're doing all right, I think. Folks, I'll see you in three. Michael, don't go away. I'm not. Did I get something wrong? I could have sworn I heard the... Maybe I'm wrong. All right, I'll go on. I guess maybe I got it. Ah, the heck with it. Let's just go on questioning. If we get cut off, so be it. What on earth is got this for a, for a title? The Nutter Agreement. What is the Nutter Agreement? Well, Nutter is a consent decree. They, 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 Nutter is the name of a company. And whenever we'd ask, what did we do wrong, or what kind of agreements do you have, he wouldn't answer the question. He just tells us to look at that. No, no, and, no. Uh, what is the agreement? What, what does it entitle them or you to? It's an agreement between Nutter and the Federal Trade Commission that the Federal Trade Commission wanted to use as an example to show what you have to do if they come at you for bad security practices and you agree to sign it. And that's about the audit for two decades. So it's an years, agreement between 20, 20 years. years. You're saying you have an accountant watching over you for 20 years? Yeah. I hope he's a good accountant. <laughs> oh, no, God. it's the... Um, um, you know, it, 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 in um, short, you clearly did not agree to the Nutter Agreement, which clearly was proposed to you. Um, no, of course we're not. We're not doing that. Well, of course. I mean, what the heck? You could have. But you could have done a lot of things, and that's a parallel world, but. Uh, it's clear you think that standing it alone have solved is the problem. better than agreeing to the Nutter Agreement. By the way, don't get me wrong; I've been doing versions of that myself. But nonetheless, you were given out called the Nutter Agreement. I was not given it out. No. They didn't decide. They didn't. They just gave it as an example, but they didn't give that as an option. They continued their investigation for well over a year. They just gave that for us to review. They were not negotiating, and that was never presented as an out, ever. So I would take it you were not looking forward to the morning's emails. Well, it just depended. I mean, you know, they, these guys came and went, and they always kept us on pins and needles, and they kept us preoccupied. So, well, that can yeah. have an effect, you know. You know, it's not good yep. for you. Okay. All right, away we go on my list. Oh, that must be the uh, commercials. Now, look, folks, I didn't say this was easy, but I'm doing a pretty good job, I think. Do you agree, Michael? Yeah, I think it, chrono the chronology probably could have. I could have started from A to Z, but it's fine. I think they get it. I hope they do. Oh, gosh, he's criticizing my chronology. Folks, we'll be back in three minutes. I'll plug myself, and we'll go through all... Get the book. You know what? It's not enough. Get the book. I'll see you in three minutes.
years ahead of the dominant media. FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Have you read The Last Prophecy? The book of Revelation. Who can understand it? We believe that God wrote his word to us for our understanding and salvation, on which so many diverse Christians believe in the same fundamental principles. But not so the prophecy of Daniel and Revelation. Has God by his Holy Spirit given a sure interpretation to these mysterious passages through the centuries? Yes, he has. The only difference to the individual is on which side of each prophecy he stands in time, before or after, past or future. The last prophecy is as much a book of history, fulfilling prophecy, exposed in such a way as to leave you without a doubt. Because we are living near the end of this era, we should be able to understand the substantial amount of the revelation which has already come to pass. Get the book, The Last Prophecy, which is an abridgment of E.B. Eliot's Jorge Apocalyptica, the most comprehensive work ever done on the revelation, condensed down to a mere 258 pages. You will come away with numerous incontrovertible revelations into the book of Revelation to easily dispel all of the futurist confusion which has become so popular over the last century. Visit the shopping page at FirstAmendmentRadio.com to get your copy. Get 20% off when you buy it at the FirstAmendmentRadio.com shop. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Hey folks, it's Barry Chamish. Lots more to go on this uh, article, let me tell you. Look, my books are all at lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com, right in my last name, C-H-A-M-I-S-H, you'll get to my books. Um, I heard my website and my PayPal address are not coordinating, so PayPal is Chamish, B-A, at gmail.com and my website is barrychamish.com all right one more time michael tell people how to get hold of you well you can uh, go to the devil inside the beltway.com and you can click on the link to uh, twitter or facebook and you can buy the book from a link there to amazon or go to uh, barnes noble or itunes and it is in hardcover and softcover and ebook or audiobook, so you can get it any way you want. All right, let's go to the core of issues now. Now we get to the national concern. First of all, what were Elaine's areas of concern? Why was he harassing you? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Can you say that again? Elaine. You know the lawyer. Oh, for Alan the- Shear. Oh, Alan Shear. What? What did? Oh, I mean, oh, he just. Oh, it's Alan. It's yeah, A-I-N. I believe it or not, it's oh, pronounced right. Alan. Yeah, it's spelled funny, but it's pronounced Alan. It's just his utter relentlessness and his. I mean, this guy was more way interested in trapping us more than proving us guilty of anything. He was. <clears throat> he was just he, wearing us down in, in a constant battle, uh, spending tons of resources, uh, just. You know, just being incompetent, biased, um, 
you know, not well, checking evidence. I mean, really terrible. What was he accusing you of? He was accusing, he was accusing us of very, having bad data security, security practices. There we go. All right. That's his side of things, all right? We shouldn't let that uh, pass by. Now, what were the what were his concerns? Let's give him a little, uh, you know, ballpark time. Well, I, I cannot, I cannot make this up. Okay, he rarely said what had to be done wrong, what was wrong, or what we did right. They always spoke in terms of Section Five and so, showing us agreements, um, because, and this is what people have a hard time dealing with. The FTC doesn't have any standards that they say you have to perform at. They don't have any rules that you're supposed to know. And that was part of our big fight, was like, how can you say what is supposed to be done or not done when you've got no policies, no rules, or no standards? And so it was hard for him to say what was supposed to be done when it had never been written <clears throat> and it had never been talked about by the by the commission the to get public that you feedback. Violated? I'm sorry? Laws. You have to violate it something. Well they're saying we violated section five and the case is blowing up right in front of them. But see here's what you have to understand. Right. The the reason people settle is because the FTC will drag you into court and keep you there for a long time. And well, they use that as a threat. That is that's a threat extortion. to make you settle even though you're, you're not guilty. Look, he didn't come to see you. You had to fly to Washington, a uh, right. very nice town if you're not there to testify. Um, the fact of the matter is you went to the meeting and you didn't like him much. No, I didn't trust him at all. I mean, I thought Who they were just, you know, my, my, I'm sorry. Who was there? Uh, his, his investigator partner, Ruth Yodakin and Alan Shear. And I and was there with my vice. your side, who was there? My lawyer and my vice president and myself. Who is that? Well, Dale, I. Bill, right? I yeah, yeah, Bill and, and, and uh, Evelyn. And they came out of there without any help for you, right? Right. They came up just giving us more assignments, and we realized that they were crazy. <laughs> All right. No, that's important. I, in reading your book, I was so unimpressed with the people helping you. Really, that's between us, okay? I said well, it's, it's, it's very baffling. I mean, you know, no one had been through this before. It just didn't make sense. I mean, the government didn't make sense, but it's the government, you know, so you don't want to get in a fight with them because they, they can just go come at you. But The um, problem is there was no one standing up for you. They were caving in everywhere, especially that's right. Bill. Well, how, how do you say that? How do you see that? I'll go to your book after the meeting. What he told you is to clam up. There, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm I see. Say, I see. Well, right. He, he, made, he, 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 was, he was naive at that point. Right, naive. Right. All right. Let's go on to uh, this case where I see you so alone and naked in the wind, all right? What is CLIA? CLIA, that is the uh, Clinical Laboratory um, oh, Inspection Act or something like that. And it's basically... This is a big point. You were, in fact, reporting to an agency... Don't gloss over this. Go into it. Right, right. So, so as a medical laboratory, you're under Health and Human Services, and you're inspected every year by the federal agency and the state agency, and that's called and under the rules of CLIA, and um, that's what you're expected on to make sure that you're testing everything properly and your machine's working well and you send all your tests off to a third party location to make sure your tests agree to what they're doing. They they send you these sample tests What's a few times a year. 
to the FTC that you already complied with a government agency. What's that worth? They, they didn't care. They wanted the power too. They wanted the power, and they were trying to trump uh, health and human services. They wanted the power. They believed it was their power to have. And Did if you, you wanted to take Priya them on and send someone over and say they complied with our standards. Did you use this? Oh, absolutely. And they just was like, well, that's not that that's not applicable. We, we, we also have jurisdiction. And the problem is you, you have to, you know, you lose when you when you fight them because you got to spend so much money with lawyers to get the court to say they don't have jurisdiction. And you a lot have of these free legal aid. No, I, I mean, later on, It'd I had a, a lot, lot more. Cheaper and you'd lose the same way. Um, all right. Without diving into that, you didn't, with the help you got, you would have been just as well off with free legal aid. But neither here nor there. Let's go into, now we're going into your book, The Real Stuff, Why Everyone Should Be Concerned. Robert Bobak testified to Congress about our file. Dive into it, the whole thing. All right, well, in 2009, he had to come back to Congress. And, you know, it, it, it was incredible when I dis discovered a year after he did it, I saw the tapes and I watched him and I saw the, um, the, the testimony. And Who he had him to speak before Congress. I, again, I don't know. That was before I was involved, but it was run by the Democrats at that point. And um, I don't know. But he was speaking in front of the House Oversight Committee, and he started talking about more file leaks, and he put our file in the record as an example. And that was really terrifying. And then because they were doing a study with Dartmouth, Dartmouth ended up having we'll the, the get file. We'll that. That's next. Uh, we'll jump to that in one second before we get to Johnson and Wired. Let's talk Bobic. You're in the congressional record now. Why? Who invited this guy Bobic to testify before any congressional committee? What's going on here? Well, I don't know. I mean, that was with a Democratic you know, majority in the House of Representatives back then. I, I don't know how he got invited, I, I, you know, it was before my time, and we've not asked him that in any deposition. So I, I can't tell you, but he was, he was an opp given an opportunity to do more, more fear-mongering and more, more, you know, he, showing examples and giving the wrong impression to the, to the feds. And uh, that's what happened in 2009. But what grabbed my eye is he, he took our file and put it in the congressional record. And he had redacted most of it out, but I was outraged. All right. Now, I'm going into your book now. You're looking at the board of Traversa. Um, number one, Howard Schmidt, who you uh, say is Obama's security chief. Go into that. Well, there's more, of course. Wesley Clark. Uh, Dr. Larry Poneman, go through the board. How is FTC and Tavares very closely tied? Well, the, the, the board, as he wrote a few years before, was he used for influence and access. And the influence and access was, um, you know, to get, people in power's attention by having such a prestigious group of people on the board. And that would give him a big platform to talk on and people would take him seriously. And I assume that would mean then he would have access to more Congre more government contracts and, and more business in private enterprise. So he used those people by putting them on the board to, to, you know, to help the organization, which is fine if you're telling the truth, you know, but, uh, he was making up IP addresses, so it didn't work out too well. Well, you're talking about Wesley Car uh, Clark, who does have a military background, is sort of known, and he is on Tversa's board. That's not all that insignificant. No, it's not. It, it, was, it was shocking. Still is shocking. We haven't heard a word from any of them. 
have you approached them? Well, uh, no, and we can't approach right now. Um, Send them your book, just for the heck of it. Waste a stamp. No, I, I, I will just wait. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, In other words, they're all tied up. What you're saying is that, to, look, this company got into Congress to testify, undoubtedly because of Schmidt and Clark. They helped. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, because when you're when you're standing there talking with a a, gen, a former general on your, you know, with you, uh, people assume that that things are okay. The birds of feather flock, you know, flock together. So it's um, you know, it's 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 an important uh, it's, it's important versus, issue here. Look, he is paid by them. He's on the board. I assume not for free. Right, I assume so too. I don't know. Uh, I would. I look. I don't know how much more you've got to uh, stress, but I consider it pretty significant. All right, my opinion. Oh, I agree. I completely agree. I mean, these are very powerful people, and uh, you know, and a former general, and to be on that advisory board. I mean, that that gives. Um, that sort of gives you a bit of a crony type of pass, and um, people assume you're okay. So they're more, I guess, they're less likely to check. I would look into who the heck is doing this operation, and when you've got, look, you've got Obama's security chief, Homeland Security, you've got Wesley Clark. You've got really powerful people you're against, and that could make life very, very difficult for you. Well, that's right. I mean, you know, it's amazing. It's like a movie. It's just, you know, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, how do you think I felt when I first found out? I mean, it's just, it's shocking. It actually is, by the way. You didn't make a, a big point in your book, but it is. All right, I agree with you. Now we go to the next point. You're looking at, I don't know what Wire does. I don't even know what Darth, Dartmouth does. But your documents were used in an article in Wired by one Eric Johnson. Don't be shy, expand. All right, so Dartmouth had gotten $24 million uh, from Homeland Security to, to, uh, that was going to partially fund their study on, on cybersecurity leaks over a, a two-and-a-half-year period. And, and one of the studies they did was on healthcare uh, data hemorrhages in the healthcare center, uh, and so healthcare um, marketplace. And so they got, got in touch with Ty Versa to try to find files over healthcare. And they wrote a paper about it. And they published the paper. And one of the files they published inside the paper was the file that, that was taken by Ty Versa off my workstation. Now, and that, so, of course, went widespread. Um, did that affect you? No. I mean, I actually know? didn't know about it for like a year. I mean, I shouldn't say it this way. Does it affect me now? No, it's over. But I mean, the fact that they were... It's not so over. You got into Wired, which in that world of electronics means you got known. Uh, it's not so over. Well, they didn't mention, no, because they didn't mention my company's name. So I didn't get Just known the because they didn't, they didn't mention the name. It was only later when we pointed it out. I mean, the, the word LabMD is not in that article, or nor is it in, in the academic paper. But when I saw the file, I knew it was mine. You know, and that was, that was crazy. What you said in this article, and I'm going to quote you again, that this allowed the potential to leak your client's medical data to tabloids. You wrote that. They wrote that. The it allowed, say that again, it allowed what? The medical data to be leaked out to the tabloids, to the globes, 
to the Inquirer. I don't know how they'd use that, but that's one of the claims um, of this leak, is that it's going to get out there. I'm not even sure if somebody's cancer uh, tissues is such a big story, but that's the claim in this article. Yeah, what page are you on? I'll leave it be. Uh, if I want to do pages, I've got a whole book full of them. All right. You look at it later, all right? All right. Now, let's yeah. continue with this article. Look, what you're saying, what Eric Johnson of Wired is claiming, that P2P leaks included the Iraqi bomb diffusers, all their data, and how to make stuff really dangerous to deploy them into this field. Do you know anything about this, or is it just... No, I, they, he had testified all sorts of things, so I don't. That's their study and their allegations, and I don't, I don't know. Well, frankly, you did... All right. Uh, without going into grand detail, you did mention that these were claims... By why? Right, I know they. I know there were claims they were made, and and that's the reason why I, I point them out because they're big claims. But I don't know the well, specifics of them. Well, they include you in that. My goodness. They yes, include they include my. In they include my stuff. property. But they, they say a lot of things. I don't necessarily thing. believe them. <laughs> well, again, if you're included in an article, which, by the way, also claims. P2P leaks included the presidential helicopter. Um, you're way up there in data leaks, in, according to Wired and Eric Johnson. Well, now, this is true. Um, this, we know, um, you know, we know that it is, that, that, that he testified last week that, uh, they went into a computer in Virginia and they found uh, President Obama's Marine One helicopter plans. Right. And he testified that Bobak told him to create an IP address to make it look like they didn't find it in Virginia, to make it look like they found it instead in Iran on a workstation. And then he alerted the media and the media got in a huge frenzy, and that that's what he would do to let people um, you were assume that it was a in huge very problem. Serious leaks. It's yes. not like that you were minor. Somehow you got into Congress, you got into the record, you got into Wired, all of this from your cancer research uh, laboratory. You got included in big stuff. Well, yeah, absolutely. But but that that's just and their allegations. They just put up a head on a spike to scare people so that they'll buy their services. I mean, it's not a complicated situation once you understand it. You know, and they use a ton of it different is indeed, examples. By the way, it is indeed. You're talking about DOD employee records alongside your medical records. I mean, this is you're being included into major, major, major leaks. Uh, I don't think you should dismiss this that quickly. Well, I'm I'm not dismissing, except that it's all the same. I mean, it's a major, major leak when you take nine thousand people and their and their cancer detection information, you hold it hostage. I don't care if they're not famous. Well, you know? what do you I think mean, about the government? I mean, you've gone through hell. Um, right. As far as I can see from your book, I'm only up to one twenty. Um, Frankly, you've been put through hell. Your business is destroyed. You're not, well, you wrote a book, so, you know, if that replaced it. What do you think about the government? What's their motive? Well, I think, I think we've got, I think we have huge problems with the government. I think that we have a huge problem uh, with bureaucrats that have way too much power that are not reined in. I think it's a culture uh, that's corrupt. Um, I think it's a culture that's extremely arrogant, and I think I don't think there's any accountability. I mean, there, this FTC has been trying to get into cybersecurity for how long? And and while all these breaches are going on, this is what they do. They get fooled by this guy, 
and they go after. I mean, I think they've got serious problems, and and the problem is stems is from there, is there someone to turn to and. Uh, I don't know. I doubt it. Well, the, that is the problem is that you can't turn to someone after all this carnage has been made. They should be being watched over long before. And most of those commissioners have done a terrible job. And that is a culture of attack on private citizens. And, and, and bringing this to light should help stop it. Because oh, I certainly don't you're see so breaches. You're such a hopeful guy, Michael. Well, there you and go. And believe me, do? I relate to you, okay? But <laughs> honest to goodness, they got the bucks and they got the money and they've got the power and we're just pishers. But neither here nor there. Look, I stopped because I didn't want to go on to a very grand, grand interview. But I stopped at the FTC it attacks TIX. I have no idea what you're talking about. For our next interview, I will. What's TIX? Uh, what page? Do you, are you, do you have a page there? It's actually 118, but don't you know what TIX? Well, do you know how, how long? <laughs> Hold on. I don't want to say that there's, oh, it's, it's in the entire book, so I have to look. Well, uh, I just it, read it. And believe me when I tell you this. 120 pages is enough to be... Look, what you're talking about is a bureaucratic nightmare. All right. Right. It's exactly uh, right. It's a bureaucratic nightmare. And but I'm that, asking that's you, it. is there someone to turn to to get justice? Is well, there a we way turn, out? Well, we'll have to, well, the, we, we have congressional oversight, and we got immunity from the Justice Department, and we're just going to have to see. I mean, we really, it, it's, it's what I want people to understand that when something this bad happens to you by our government, sometimes there's not a lot you can do. And we'll find out. You know, we just cracked this in a big way this week, and that took years. So we'll see what happens next, basically, and what, um, you know. All right, let's you know. wear ourselves down. What are you doing now that the business is closed? Um, what I'm doing is I'm actually writing, and I'm, I'm no, on the I radio know that. I speak. Are you trying to reopen? Look, you used to be able to... No, we're not trying to reopen right now. We can't. I mean, all the key employees are all over the country. They've all moved down with their lives. Uh, and, and, and we can't even get insurance coverage to reopen. I mean, all the insurance companies canceled yeah, our insurance. Are you right about that? The landlord's I don't know gone. What HIPAA is, but you say that they were also in the extortion game, sending monthly letters of. You write about this. Oh gosh, mm -hmm. you know what, Michael? We had a good interview. I've got four hundred more pages of your book to go. <laughs> all right. Well, a lot of them. Actually, have three hundred. Less than three hundred to go. Come on, give me credit. I started out of <laughs> Nicely done. Story. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I enjoyed it. Folks, this is Barry Chambers. So I'll see you next Tuesday. Hopefully, I'll have air conditioning. You can't believe what I'm going to do, folks. Thank you. See you next. This is Barry Chambers. Bye. If you'd like to get a copy of this program, you may subscribe at FirstAmendmentRadio.com for only $45 a month. And you'll receive an MP3 CD weekly of all of our programs. As a bonus, we'll send you a password for our audio archives online. That's a $15 value. Or you may request any month of any program on one MP3 CD for a minimum donation of only $25. Or any single program on tape, MP3 CD, or CD for only $15. You may do all of this online at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Just follow the instructions to make a donation or subscribe. You may also adopt an hour of your favorite program 
Please don't forget that most of the programs on FirstAmendmentRadio.com are listener-supported. Don't do internet? Then call 559-781-3773 and we'll be honored to help you. Thank you from all of us here at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. I pledge allegiance to the King of Kings and to his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. One holy nation and our heavenly Father, grace, mercy, justice for all.